I'm very fortunate to get the opportunity to comment on mice before they're even made. Razor contacted me about this one and I gave some thoughts on the shape, comfort curves in the buttons, and side button position and size. I wasn't paid for that, and this is not a sponsored video, but I am really excited about Razer entering the lightweight competitive mouse market. This is made with eSports in mind, and they've done an amazing job. So here it is, the new Razer Viper. It's a medium sized ambidextrous mouse with a low profile, so it should work best with claw and fingertip grip. It weighs about 70 grams with an extremely smooth and flexible cable, and it has a top sensor to go along with it, also with very low latency. Great for first person shooters and MOBAs that require high accuracy, and it also has optical switches. This is a top mouse, but everyone is different, so let's get into the details. Many competitive FPS players are looking for lighter mice these days, because less force needed on the mouse means easier to move, and therefore easier to aim. Also some people suggest there's less fatigue if you're swiping it a lot. I had no trouble with all three main aim styles in Quake, that's prediction, point, and tracking. I've been using these kinds of mice as my main for a long time now. The shape is just really good. And you might think, well maybe that mouse just suits him. But no, this is actually a little too big for me. I play best with smaller mice. As you can see in the comparison, this is more like the Basilisk or Lancehead, but not as large as a Death Adder. I actually need a mouse smaller than the Abyssus. The dimension that seems most important for aiming is in the middle here. That's the grip width and it appears to be about 5.75 centimeters. If you measure your three fingers across like in the picture, and it's the same, then this might actually help you aim your best. It can work with other sized hands of course, but as a general starting point, if you want to improve your accuracy, the three finger rule seems to be helping so far. The length is about 12.5 centimeters if you ignore some of the flare at the front, which doesn't really affect grip, but when it's combined with the height, that's when we get an idea of the grips. Because it's only about 3.8 centimeters high, that's at the highest point. That's kind of medium, so it's more suited for claw and fingertip grip. For palm, you'd usually want about 4 centimeters, and fairly long. If your hand is under 18 centimeters, you might be able to palm grip it. Although you might be sacrificing a bit of aiming potential there, it could still feel good. A quick tour of the shape, it has subtle curves in the sides, horizontally and vertically. You probably recognize these as similar to what's on the Zowie FK and the Final Mouse Ultralight. In my opinion, one of the best ways to shape the sides. It helps for comfort and gripping it when picking it up, especially with the rubberized grips. The rest is just a textured plastic. The grips are only on the side, and hopefully they don't fall off. That's been a problem on mice recently, but I have heard companies are working on the issue. The sides on this mouse do go in a little more than the FK though. It's only by about a millimeter on either side, but I think it feels pretty good. Also like the Zowie FK, it has a mostly flat top with curves on the sides, but it has deeper comfort curves in the buttons, which I find to feel better. And looking at the base, you can get an idea of the overall shape as well. It's wider at the back and front, and I think the front is what I would make slimmer on this one. It's just a little bit too wide. Then again, this mouse is a bit big for me. I find having my ring finger pushed outward like this makes it harder to control, but for larger hands, it might be a good thing. Either way, it's an amazing shape. Definitely one of the best I've used at this point. Final note here, you can see the two large mouse feet. They glide smoothly and quietly and the mouse is stable on them. DPI button on the base too, so no accidental clicks. It has side buttons on both sides, so this is for left and right handed users. Because I was a small part of the development process on this mouse, I did get to comment on these. I really don't like when ambidextrous mice have side buttons that get in the way. I get so many accidental clicks. Rose's solution was to make them thin and shape them so that it's actually hard to press in. You might be able to see here that I really have to try to press them in with my ring finger, and even then it's hard. So no problem on that side, although on the thumb side, it is actually a bit more difficult. Compared to the usual side buttons you'd get, for me, I personally had to make more effort to click these in. It's not impossible, they're still usable, but it's just one of those trade-offs. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth having this way. Just have to use the thumb tip instead of the joint and the thumb. Here's a quick look at it next to the Zowie FK1 and Glorious Model O. You can see the basic principles are all there. It's almost like they just squished it a bit, and that's actually a good thing in my opinion. I've been saying for a long time now, the FK shell is just a bit too long. So making it shorter and maybe a tiny bit thinner with deeper curves is actually a great idea. And while it's hard to show, it actually feels quite different in the hand. Most noticeably, this section here on top. I'm very aware of it on the FK and Model O, but it feels more natural on the Viper. Something I don't want to see though is a market full of clones. 
These three mice are pretty similar. I'd rather not see the same mouse over and over. They are a bit close and they're sort of borderline for me. So I'll just say again, I think it's okay to take inspiration, but not copy. The Viper is actually my favorite of the lot. It also doesn't have holes in it, and yet still only weighs 70 grams. And even better, while the first Model O's had a bit of an issue with the weak sides, this one doesn't. It feels solid. Rosa have done a great job with this. I would love to see more like it. Especially because like the Model O, they've added a super smooth flexible cable. You can see here it handles just like the one on the Model O. These cables make mice feel like they're wireless. But Razer have managed to get that feel with a thin cable. You can see here the Model O cable is much thicker. Love using these now. And on a lightweight mouse, it's even more important. Now let's talk about the buttons. Here's a listen to them before we get to the details. Left and right are fairly loud, which I assume is from the new optical actuation, as in the new design, which I'll get to in a moment. They feel a bit hollow, but not bad. Not something that I'm bothered with in game, but something I notice out of game. The mouse wheel is a bit tighter as usual, and up and down actually feels really good. It has the noticeable steps that many people want, but it's still smooth and quiet while browsing. They even have the hollow design to keep the weight down. Definitely one of my favorite wheels by the feel and sound of it. The side buttons do all have a different sound, as to be expected, and they're hard to use for a good reason, but at least they have a nice click. So left and right have optical actuation, and this is in hope of combating a few issues. One is double clicking. If you've had the double clicking issue before, this would be really good news for you. Optical switches should never have this problem, as they don't rely on a metal leaf contact. Cutting or blocking a light beam should work the same way throughout the life of the switch, and in the latency testing, it performs as well as the other top mice. Really low scores against the G903. It was a bit better in the human latency testing, but you see on the right, the bump test shows that they're just as fast as each other. Sometimes saying left, sometimes saying right is faster. I also checked for ghosting, no problems. As for quality, despite the low weight, it seems really well constructed. I can't test for long-term durability. I've only had it for a few weeks, but it seems fine except for a very slight rattle on the wheel. Not a big problem though. Now I'm sure many of you are saying, but I don't want the Razer software, but then it's also great to have software when you need it. I have good news for you as well. This one has onboard memory. So once you've set it up, you can actually uninstall the software. The only thing it won't store is macros. Apparently macros are banned at tournaments and this mouse is meant for esports. So it makes sense. Also just a note here, you don't need an account to use Synapse. This is some more good news. They now allow you to sign in as guest. So just sign in as guest, set the mouse up, then uninstall. Done. Looking in the software though, you can alter the buttons, even the mouse wheel up and down, and you see how I have hypershift here. That means when I hold that button, I can change what the other buttons do. When I don't have dedicated media keys on a keyboard, it's great being able to put them on the mouse like this. So I can change volume up and down, hit play pause, and go next or previous track. That's more a general use thing, but I love having this functionality on a mouse as long as there are extra buttons to use with it. This is why I really like having buttons on both sides. In the performance tab, we have DPI. It goes from 100 to 16,000 in steps of 50, and you can change the polling rate. And you have one light on the back of the mouse, which is RGB. Speaking of the sensor, Rosa have been using the 3390, and it's a top optical, pretty much the best you can get. There are a bunch of tests you can do, but sensors are so good these days, it's barely worth it. I prefer to just show you how it performs in game. The liftoff distance is about 1 DVD, just under, extremely low. As expected, amazing sensor. Just a few points on the general use. The buttons are separate from the shell, so they do have a bit of wobble. This is pretty common. As long as you don't get buttons that are wobbling too much and affecting you while you play, this is okay and I wouldn't say return it. These actually feel pretty solid, and we'll have to wait and see how the side grips do. They might be really good, they might wear out, we'll see. Now for the conclusion. I love where we're at with mice right now. When I first started the channel, we had this idea of what we wanted, but this is even better than that. The last four years have seen us go from pretty good mice to absolutely amazing mice. It's easy to think I'm just being overly positive, a sellout or whatever, but the truth is these mice are really just that good. The shape is amazing for fingertip and claw grip, great comfort, really well designed, 
Really good textures and materials by Feel. Almost flawless sensor. Amazing buttons and wheel, along with optical switches. Subfix for potential double clicking. Extremely smooth and soft, flexible cable. Very low weight. I mean, find me a flaw on this mouse. It's an outstanding mark of just how far we've come in competitive gaming products. Okay, no mouse is perfect. There are things that can be improved still. And it has that slight rattle on the wheel, but you know what I mean. We're in a very good place with mice right now. I trust I've backed up everything I've said, and this is what I've been asking for for years. Obviously, I want a smaller version of this and even lighter, but if my hand was big enough, this would definitely be high on my list. And by the size is how you can choose which one is right for you. If you're choosing between this, the FK1, and the Model O, me personally, I think it's an easy choice. I would rather not have the holes, but I also want the lightweight, the better sensor, and the better cable. So I'd go with the Razer Viper. I don't know the price of it, if the Model Low is cheaper. It's actually quite similar, so you could go the lower price. But if you have the money, I don't know about everyone else, but I would rather not have holes. And also, from what I can tell, the Razer mouse does have higher quality. And you get buttons on both sides, so left and right handed. Basically the same weight, more features on the Razer, and it also has lower latency on the buttons. The Model O does have that 4 millisecond debounce. That's not a big deal, but I just wanted to mention everything that was kind of relevant to your choice. The Model O is still a solid choice and most likely cheaper, so I'm sure that will keep selling. But from what I can tell, and according to what I've said in this review, this is the better product. I'd recommend it for MOBAs and first person shooters, to anyone's hand size and grip style that it suits. But as always, you have to find what's right for you. Everyone is different. Hope that helps. Big thanks to Razer for including me in the process and sending it out for a review. Again, this is not sponsored content. All opinions are mine and not influenced by anyone else. Check the description for more information, including ways you can help support the channel. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.